Now I'm going to talk about contour drawing animals in the zoo. I love drawing from life. I find that it really helps me to be really present in the moment with observing these animals. I love that the animals move so quickly so you have to be really in the moment with them and you just get a very small quick impression before you have to move on because the animal moves. Although one tip is that if you go into the reptile house you find that things will stay still for a bit longer. So this is a frilled lizard and you can see I've just traced some of the shapes with my pen and this isn't a blind contour, sometimes I do a blind contour, um, but it's very, very quick, very, this is just a very quick impression, and it's just looking at the outlines. This was another one from the reptile house. You can see this creature stayed still for a bit longer for me. I just love that you get this kind of very quick, very quick sketch. Tortoise was really great stayed still for quite a long time <laughs> and here you can see you know you may say this is just nothing at all but I don't think this is wasted because I spent you know two seconds or however long it was looking at this bird and looking at the shape of this outline look at this line isn't it great like curves that way and then that way and then it goes back up like that and got this little bit at the beak and then it goes like this its head and I I don't think that that time was wasted this page doesn't look like much but that's not the point to me the point is actually being there in the moment with the the bird looking at it enjoying it noticing these beautiful shapes and lines that the that the bird makes and then it moves and then you've got another outline to look at this one I managed to actually do most of the bird and I just love this shape of the, of the wing here. And as I'm doing it, I will do, you know, one little thing and then the creature will move and then I'll start something else. And each one is only a few seconds. You know, I'm just like, move on, do another one. And sometimes I use up pages and pages and pages. you can see I don't know I think this was one trip to the zoo and I did and I, no, I turned the page and then I turned the page and then I turned the page and I could almost use up a whole sketchbook just with one trip to the zoo you know some of them turn out absolutely terrible but then you get these little things like that I really like this beak shape here and you really get a little sense of the animal even when with just a snippet. You know, look how much I got done here before the animal moved. But I don't mind that. Just keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I don't mind because I don't feel like it's a waste of paper because I know that I can always come back over this later with paint. I can just layer on top of it. I could stick something over the top. But yeah, so that was all maybe one trip to the zoo. I love this guy, I love this. You really get a, an impression of who this is, don't you, this creature? And here I think it's sitting, facing away from me, so this is its, its body and maybe its wing kind of curled up. And only a few very simple lines, but I just really love how that turned out. And you know, I wasn't gonna show you this, but just to make you feel like it doesn't matter that you make these very simple lines and, and then you think, oh, that didn't work here, it's like that didn't work, turn the page. You know, use up the paper, why not? You can always paint over it. So nothing is ever wasted. Being in that moment with that, with that animal, that's what's important, really looking at it, the, the act of really being present, looking, absorbing the shape and appreciating, you know, the curve here of that bird's head. And being there and draw, trying to draw it, that's one way of really, really noticing and really being, paying attention to that stuff. 
it's almost like the drawing is inconsequential really it's just a tool to help you be present and to really look and notice the beauty that there is this was a penguin that stayed still long enough for me to actually do the whole thing I really love this how simple it is and yet you totally know what creature it is don't you really really quick sketch what else have we got here I think this one I did blind, this was a vulture, and yeah, I don't think I was looking at the paper here, I think I was just looking at the bird. This one I've started to paint over, so you can see that those lines are still there underneath, and you don't have to waste the page, you know, you can come back over it with other things. You know, this just looks like scribbles in some ways, but it's still really important practice. You can see, like, I didn't get it right there, but it doesn't matter. I think also I work in pen because then you're not going to rub it out. You have to just be really bold and go for it. And here I tried that technique where you kind of, you go like, oh, that the body is kind of a circle and you draw that. And then that doesn't really work for me. I much prefer looking really carefully at the line, the quality of the line of the outside contours of the creature. I prefer that technique. Okay, what else have we got here? I mean, that's just a total scribble, isn't it? <laughs> but, you know, I was in the moment. I was, I think maybe I wasn't looking at the paper when I did this or this. Here I've also started to paint over it. There's some lines under there. And this is the <laughs> total scribbles. So this was maybe not such a successful day at the zoo. It looked like I did lots and lots of scribbles. <laughs> but this head can have turned out quite well. Yeah, and it can feel like you're just churning through your sketchbook. But I like to come back over with paint, with collage. I think this here is something I've stuck over, an unsuccessful drawing there. I've put something over the top here. Um, you, you don't have to wait, you don't have to feel like the paper's wasted. Okay. And then this is a trip I took to Paradiser, which is in Belgium, and it's an absolutely amazing zoo. We actually stayed there, and I really wanted to go and see the shoebell storks, but unfortunately, when we were there, they weren't actually on display which was really disappointing because that was kind of the main reason we went there. But it was really fun anyway. I took this new sketchbook with me and so a lot of the first part of it is this was a blind contour of a rhino, a baby rhino and an and a adult rhino. Look at this line here, isn't it gorgeous? Just being in the moment. Uh, we stayed in the walrus house and it was amazing because we got to sleep in a room next to the walrus enclosure and they came swimming past the window and when we were sort of in bed we could see them <laughs> swimming past. It was amazing. Look at this little guy. And I didn't do this at the time. I came back and did this later because I actually quite liked this drawing of the rhino. Sometimes I'll just completely paint over the unsuccessful lines, drawings like this one, I'll probably paint over it eventually, but these were pictures of the drawings of the, of the walruses <laughs> that were swimming past our, our room. You can see the tusks there, and they're like whiskery bits. They like to swim upside down past the window, which is really funny. And I loved their flippers. <laughs> Swimming upside down. So you can see, yeah, I was trying to capture the shape while it was in front of me. So very, very quick sketches, but I really like how it turned out. Oh, this is interesting. This is also a sketch that I did at the zoo. And 
I thought that this was quite successful. This was a pelican. And so I wanted to keep it. So I just came in afterwards when I got home and painted in the background. And that was a, another bird that was sitting down. Well, I think that worked quite well, really. Let's see what else have we got in here. This is a toucan. Very quick sketch from life. More birds. Birds are hard because they move so quickly. But I'm really pleased with this. And the more that you do these quick sketches, the more you get to know the shapes kind of intimately, including all the little wiggly bits. And now this is something where I've developed the sketch. So this was actually originally a sketch of a bird. I think that was its eye there. It was like, that's what was its beak and this was its wing. I think this was also a sketch of something and it was unsuccessful. So I decided to try turning it into something else by filling in the different areas with different black and white patterns. This was another example. I quite liked this actually. This was a hornbill, a southern ground hornbill and they look quite fierce. And this was the shape of its wing and this is its head here. And then so I just kind of coloured in around it in black just to add to the page. Still wouldn't consider this page finished but um, let's see what else have we got here. Oh, and here's an, another example of a page that I've developed. So you can see there's like little lines here from where I've done a, a really quick sketch. And then I decided I didn't, wasn't bothered, didn't want to keep it. So this, I think, was paint that was left on my palette. And you can see the brush strokes. And I was cleaning up at the end of the day and I just kind of went and like printed, like kind of printed off the palette on both pages. And then this was some tissue paper where I'd done some big writing in black ink, which I stuck over the top. It just shows it doesn't have to be wasted when you do a, a line drawing. I think these little lines in it really add to it. video if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up i'd love to hear how you feel about sketching animals from life please let me know in the comments i've got lots more content planned for the next few months so subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out i'll see you on the next video until then dooey dot scenes bye bye